Hello wonderful person and welcome to What The Math, this is Anton and today we're taking a look at Cellcraft. Cellcraft is actually a free to play web based game that teaches you all about cell biology in a very very cool um, strategic way and we're gonna sh play this game, I'm gonna show you what it's all about and let's start by basically just starting it. Uh, now, first of all, this game is available on different websites, but I think the best website to play it on is uh, from a person by the name of... Or I guess that's not really his name, but that's just a web one of the websites where you can find this game. It's called Bioman Biology. There's actually quite a few games you can find here if you just scroll through um, his links on the left here. And uh, under, I think it's under genetics, or possibly under cells you can find the game right here cellcraft now anyway so this game has actually uh, been changed a few times and it has been developed uh, by a team of people including several universities so it is very very accurate it's very very educational and it's actually kind of fun it's probably one of the few educational games that is kind of fun um, all right so you play as a cell that uh, acquires different organelles by performing various missions. Now, first you basically start with centrosomes and uh, this tutorial will teach you how the cell moves around uh, using something called pseudopods. And um, if you're playing this in class or if you're a teacher that wants to use this in class, there's actually a really cool encyclopedia in this game that teaches you about each of the um, uh, organelles that you're about to use, gives you a lot of details, a lot of really cool things. But basically, yeah, so it's what it's telling me is, okay, you have these centrosomes, you're going to create a pseudopod by doing this. Oh, look at that. I used some ATP, which is energy, to move the cell. Good job. Mission complete. Here's your reward. Now, this is how the game starts. It starts very simple, actually. Um, but as you play through it, with time, it does get really complicated and really hard. Now, first of all, we, we will eventually have to find a way to how to produce more ATP, which is energy. And second of all, we actually will have enemies as well. There's enemies to come very, very soon. All right, so it's telling us to move two more times using pseudopods. And this is how cells and bacteria move around the world using these uh, centrosomes. I've discovered ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Now, if you want to learn more about it, you click on... Uh, okay, mysterious figure, thank you for talking to me. You click on this, and it tells you all about um, ATP and what it does and why it's so important, and so on and so forth. And my mission now is to actually f go ahead and try to find some ATP somewhere in this world. And here's some ATP. All I have to do is basically just move over it and I'm going to absorb it directly. Now I got some glucose, uh, but that is not ATP just yet. So glucose is a scientific name for sugar. Sugar can then become ATP. Now, how do we do that? Okay, so what do we do? Well, we will need to find a way to produce it into sugar using mitochondrions. Now, the way this game progresses and the way it teaches you about each of the organelles is actually absolutely brilliant. I kind of wish that when I was learning my, um, molecular biology and cellular biology, this game was around because it would make more, much more sense to me because uh, learning it hands-on in this way is absolutely brilliant. So right now, all I have to do is use my... Ooh, I'm using the wrong button here. Okay, I was actually trying to zoom in, but unfortunately, um, mouse scrolling doesn't really work right now. Uh, it does work if you're not recording though. Anyway, so yeah, once in a while you get these uh, broadcasts and there's a giant meteor headed to our planet. And this is basically just a very, very simple storyline that is in this game uh, that teaches you about various characters in the game and what they want you to do and what's going on and so on and so forth. I'm gonna skip this for now just so you can actually do this by yourself. But basically the missions in this game go by levels and they're actually all educational and all kind of fun. Now, uh, Spike is going to teach me about some other organelles, but I, before I start, I just want to take a look at mitochondria. So, okay, so we got nucleus as well now, which is great. Uh, but mitochondria is very interesting is that it's actually uh, an organelle that is present in almost every cell. I don't want to say every cell because in May of 2016, we've discovered one type of bacteria that doesn't have mitochondria, actually. I believe it's a bacteria present in a gut of a guinea pig that doesn't seem to have any mitochondria. So there's actually alternative ways for cells to produce uh, energy except for using mitochondria. But um, so in this game, you basically have these organelles. They, they have functions and they, they work in a similar way um, like buildings in other real-time real RTS games. And your job is to essentially, um, well, first of all, get resources, find amino acids, find nucleic acids, there's some amino acids here. Oh, actually, that's nucleic acids, okay. Um, that will produce RNA. 
and I also need to get some of these guys as well. Let's actually go this way. As you can see, every time I move around, every time I do something, my ATP goes down, so I have to pr continuously produce it. And to produce ATP, I also need to feed my mitochondria um, more and more glucose, which, which we'll have to discover really soon. Now, um, nuclear, nucleic acids and um, amino acids are another type of resource, and these will help us produce RNA and DNA, which will obviously help us create various proteins and create even more stuff. Now, this particular mission is complete, and we are now required to construct, uh, construct what? I didn't read this. Should have read this. Okay, yes, we have to, uh, construct ribosomes. Now, what are ribosomes, you may ask? Oh, look at that, we're about to be taught what ribosomes are. We can also now use zoom camera and control our game using WSD. So now you can actually zoom in and see these ribosomes, and ribosomes... Look at that explanation. Are like factories. The nucleus, uh, the nucleus gives them orders and they make things. This is how. When a nucleus makes RNA from nucleic acids, which are these particles right here, RNA leaves through these pores and then it goes to a ribosome. And RNA is a blueprint for a product. It slides to a ribosome like a credit card. Ribosome makes the product from amino acids. RNA comes out and gets recycled. So we're going to use this and this to produce ribosomes and then uh, it gets recycled and we are able to construct uh, various types of uh, proteins. Now the game is telling us to produce 20 more ribosomes. But we're not going to have enough uh, materials unfortunately, so I have to go collect some materials. Let's move around, use some ATP, collect more of this stuff. There's some glucose right there as well. And we're going to collect all of this. Get full on um, nucleic acids and also amino acids. And I think now we can zoom in and construct a few more ribosomes. And here we go. All right, excellent. This is, is finished. Uh, okay, so this is the centrosomes and mitochondrion. Perfect. Now another mission finished and we can continue our game. And this time we are going to learn about something called um, slicosomes or slicer enzymes. Uh, all right, slicers. Hey, Nucleus is making something else. Let me, let's take a look at it. And what are these things? Different types of spaghetti. Okay, these are different. These are called slicer enzymes. And and here we go. Is that 10? All right, excellent. So we have these uh, slicer enzymes. And it says here, it destroys viral RNA. Now this is really important because every time a virus tries to enter us, they will actually protect our cell and they'll destroy the viral particles and then uh, essentially give our cell, ex uh, our cell extra resources that we can then use to construct our own materials. So these slicer enzymes are essential for protection for our cell. All right, so we've completed this mission and uh oh, looks like we're getting sick. That's not good. We have our first danger, viruses incoming. We've caught cold, just like I currently have right now, you can probably hear by my voice. I also have a virus that is invading my cells. Viruses are attacking our cells, they will invade your cells and reproduce themselves. This is viral RNA, uh, it's protected by a coat. Now what viruses do is, they try to get to your RNA and get inside your ribosomes, and then if they get into your ribosome, they will make more viruses, but slicer enzyme will destroy this. Um, this virus, so let's see what happens. We're going to zoom in here. Here comes the virus. They are going to enter our cells, and here they come, and look at that. We've defeated them. Virus wave uh, defeated. A+. Plus. We managed to defeat every single virus and destroy all of them, collecting even more materials for our cell. Alright, so that's essentially the game in a nutshell, but I'm going to keep playing this just to show you how advanced it gets. So, in the beginning you learn about um, how to manage your resources, how the cell moves, uh, the fact that there's actually danger in here, the fact that uh, you may actually have to strategize and reposition yourself to try to collect as much resources as possible because you'll need to collect both amino acids and nucleic acids to construct even more stuff. Oh, I see something over there. And you also obviously need to uh, collect glucose which will allow you to create more ATP. Now, I'm kind of running out of ATP slowly because I haven't really seen much glucose here. Uh, but we'll move around. We'll see if we can find something else. And there's glucose right there. This will allow us to construct more ATP. Ooh, that cost me quite a lot. But that uh, 
two particles of glucose will be able to actually uh, construct quite a lot of ATP using mitochondrions. Oh, look at that. Look at what I found. I found a gold mine. 200 um, amino acids and two more glucose. Now we just have to wait. And we're going to zoom in and just watch what happens. So mitochondrion is working, creating, um, using each glucose to cre create 38 ATP. Now this is actually very realistic because one glucose does produce 38 ATP. Um, as it increases our ATP value, we can obviously do more things, uh, but we don't actually have that much. Yeah, we're about to run out of sugar. Anyway, so moving on, let's continue. And our next mission is this. Uh oh, there's more viruses coming. We need to construct more slicers. Oh, wow, that is a lot of... Let's, let's actually run away from them. Let's see what happens. We're going to run away from them, produce more slicers. Uh, they will also try to damage our membrane, and it actually does take a while to... Um... Oh, boy. I think they almost reached the nucleus. It, it does actually take a little bit of um, ATP to repair the membrane if it gets damaged, uh, but it's something that you'll need to worry about later on. Now we're up to level three now, and this is when things get really interesting. So you will now actually learn how to recycle some of the organelles that you may no longer use. So right now it's telling us that, uh, the game is telling us that we don't really need uh, slices zones right now because uh, it's very likely that there won't be any viruses coming in this particular level. So we can actually go ahead and recycle them, gaining back some of the stuff. So we actually use up a little bit of ATP, but um, we get some of the, um, amino acids back now this is important and the cell always does that so you know what you know what they say if you don't use it you lose it and this is exactly what happens in cells as well because um in many cases some of these organelles are not needed especially after you've recovered from a virus if there's too many organelles they will cost too much energy so the cell usually recycles them all right and this time the game is teaching us about fatty acids now fatty acids or fat is produced when uh, there's too much sugar around. Like in, in this particular example, if you eat too much sugar or if your body is consuming too much sugar, you will then um, produce what's called fatty acids, or, or in other words, fat, that will then get deposited somewhere in your body. Now, this is happening because there's too much glucose and it has to be stored in some way. And so we now are learning about fatty acids and how it's going to be deposited in your cell. So let's collect some more glucose and let's watch the magic happened as uh, some of this stuff gets converted to, there you go, there is fatty acids inside our, um, inside our cell. And now that we've produced 10 fatty acids, I think we can continue our, our, our adventure. And okay, so that's plenty of fatty acids. So basically this is like reserve energy that we can use later on if our cell ever needs um, energy and it's an extreme situation. So in other words, every time you store fat in your body, it can then be uh, reused uh, by your body if suddenly you're, you, have no longer any, uh, you no longer have any sugar or you start uh, starving or you find yourself in a desert and you need food. So all of this fat will be converted to uh, glucose and will um, give your cells and your body a little bit of energy. And now we have a new organelle that's been added here that uh, we get to learn about and this is called ER or endoplasmic reticulum. So um, ER is and you can kind of read about it here it builds uh, vesicles and membrane so it does rebuild your membrane and it also builds uh, these bubbles inside the cell that will transport things to and from the outside now i can build membrane by clicking this button right here and this will increase our membrane a little bit membrane production this is how the cell makes membrane from the er first rna goes to the nucleus to a ribosome um, a ribosome docks with the ER, forming what's called rough ER. Ribosome reads the RNA and pumps protein into ER. Protein travels through the inside of the ER, the lumen, and goes to the smooth ER. So it's a very, very complex procedure. Uh, and you do learn this in biology class, but it usually takes like a week to learn. Here it's explained in like seven slides, and it's very visual. It kind of makes sense, and I think once you start it in the game, it will make even more sense. Uh, the bubble of membrane covers the protein as it leaves. Protein-filled bubble is a vesicle. The vesicle emerges with the membrane and increases the size of the membrane. All right, so let's watch this unfold. Here comes the um, RNA. Then it goes into smooth ER. And then, sometime soon, we will see there, there is the vesicle. And it emerges with the membrane, making the membrane, the cell membrane much bigger. And in this game, it also increases your field of view, allowing you to see a lot more and increases your maximum health for your cell. 
Now, it's telling us to do this two more times, so let's do that. It, it is very expensive, though, so we may have to collect a little bit more stuff around us. Uh, so I'm going to walk around here and see if I can find something else that we can use to construct even more membrane. And let's see if this works now. Okay, so that's one and that's two. All right, so now we just have to wait and I think this will be mission complete and our cell will get much bigger, meaning that we can actually see much further as well. And once again, if you actually want to learn about ER, all you have to do is click this button right here and uh, it teaches you everything you need to know about what ER is and what it does and how it affects cells and so on and so forth. All right, so let's actually get to the level where we have even more danger. I'm going to uh, skip a few turns here just to show you how this game gets. Um, when, it, when you get to high level, it actually does get pretty difficult. And um, even as a strategy fan and, and as a strategy game, I guess, veteran, I found this game to be challenging. There's actually some levels here that will make you think really, really carefully about what your, your next step is. Because not only do you have to produce things, but you also have to recycle things and you have to do it very effectively. Anyway. Uh, let's move on and see what happened. Oh, yes, it's we have to recycle one membrane and There you go mission complete and Here come the viruses again. So we are now actually a little bit more advanced, but we have to start building more slicers again uh Oh, not enough nuclear acid uh, Let's zoom in see how, how we're doing here. They're they are destroying the viruses pretty successfully um, a few more things we've discovered are uh, these green thingies called peroxisomes, which are basically are responsible for removing radicals from inside our cells and protect us from uh, pro protect our nucleus and DNA from damage. And I believe we also discovered uh, these repair enzyme uh, molecules that help us repair the nucleus. All right, so now, oh yeah, there's actually two waves of viruses here. I'm going to go explore a little bit, find out if we can maybe... Oh, that's it. Okay. I, I was going to explore, see if I could find more resources, but the mission is finished. Now, essentially, this is how this game works, but it, as you can see, it does get dramatically more complex with time. As a matter of fact, by the time you get to level 5, you will already struggle because uh, there will be a lot more attacks from viruses and from other dangerous uh, things for your cell, at least. And you'll have to manage quite a lot of things. So for each of these organelles, there's a lot of things you can produce, a lot of things you can make. And most of these are actually dependent on each other. So you can't just focus on producing one thing. You actually have to make sure you produce several things. And sometimes you have to disable certain organelles because they might not be beneficial to you. Like for example, mitochondrion produces right there, right there, the green thingy. That was... Um, an oxygen radical molecule, which can actually damage your DNA uh, and your nucleus, which obviously can kill your cell over time. If I didn't have these peroxisomes helping me, my cell would actually die from within, uh, from the dangers within itself. And so a lot of these things kind of help each other. And some things that you don't need anymore, you can always just go ahead and recycle by essentially selecting them and clicking the recycle button. So there we go. Now, I honestly think this is probably one of the most brilliant biology-based games ever. I've played this three years ago. I kind of wish I played this in university if it actually existed. I don't think it existed back then. Uh, but it does teach you a dramatic amount of stuff about cell biology, about how biology works in, in, in general, and about various biological topics that often take months to learn, like what is ATP? How does uh, cell produce energy? How does cell maintain itself? You know, what is DNA? How does DNA and RNA um, influence the cell? Uh, what is going on when there's transcription and translation and stuff like that. And all of these topics are so well explained in this game that it'll probably take you a few hours to finish and you'll actually have fun and you'll learn a lot as well. So do give this game a try. I'm posting one of the links for this game in the description below. Now, I'm not entirely sure who to credit this for, but under credits right here, there's actually a few people who mentioned, for example, this person right here, who is the lead programmer, who seemed to have created this game. So I'm going to say thanks goes to them. Unfortunately, a lot of these websites either uh, completely different now or don't actually have any mentioning of Cellcraft or uh, I think the, the first website doesn't actually work anymore. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, these people did an amazing job. Uh, this is really a really, really cool game. It's definitely worth your time. If you're a biology teacher, do use this in class. It's probably one of the best ways of, of teaching about cell biology. And if you're a student of biology or you just find biology confusing, play this so it actually makes sense to you. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of your support. I'll see you guys in the next video. Game you later, and as always, bye-bye.